So the aftermath, immediate aftermath, forced on the political murderer of the Labour Party, Keir Starmer, of the lying, crooked, Hackney elected mayor, the criminal shitbag, Phil Granville, lying about his flatmate, roommate, whatever, the child sex abuse arrest Tom Dewey. This is the front page of the Daily Morning Scar on the Communist Morning Scar. Cover up claims as mayor partied with pedophile. Questions over bash with disgraced labor rising star. So today, the Morning Scar says, Hackney Mayor suspended after Morning Star expose. And this item has been, of course, briefly covered in the Guardian online. Let's check what the Guardian state of this item at this time, which is 21. 19 hours GMT, one minute before our due broadcasting starting time. Now, of course, we are looking at Muhammad Al Fayyad. So, Muhammad is spelt M O H A M E D. So, it's Muhammad Al Fayyad. Former Harrods and Fulham Football Club owner dies aged 94. This is the Guardian's. Heading and and the evil George injustice waste that criminal who single handedly carried out the years long harassment of baby angel Geronimo. is now getting a job with a waste farm that has been fined already for polluting water. Evilness, George, injustice, wasters. So what is the evilness being described as? His face is completely criminal evil face. George, injustice, given consultancy job, with Ogen or OGN, which had to pay 36,000 pounds after groundwater contaminated. And this is posted at 1530 BST, which is 1430 GMT. We have just noticed this one. The former UK Environment Secretary is to take a consultancy role with a waste management firm that had to pay. 36,000 pounds after an environment agency investigation found contamination of groundwater at a site. How come that they haven't investigated DEFRA? George Injustice, who was the Secretary of State against the Environment, Food and Rural Affairs from February 2020 until September 2022, is joining Ogien, a waste treatment company with sites across the UK. The Advisory Committee on Business Appointments, ACOBA, gave Eustace permission to take the role as a stra strategic advisor responsible for providing strategic counsel on how to navigate existing permitting and regulatory regimes processes. How to navigate, that is, they avoid existing permitting and regulatory regimes processes and offering wider advice on the environment and governance issues.
of how much he would be paid for his in his work for OGN. He said if a financial interest did arise, it would be declared through the parliamentary register. In Akoba's advice letter, neither Eustis nor the Department for the Environment, Food and Rural Affairs, that is DEFRA, made any mention of the investigation by the Environment Agency, an arm's length body of DEFRA. So the lying, these criminals are lying through their teeth. And Baby Angel Geronimo, the world's bestest witness, is vindicated again with this revelation, which is far from a complete revelation of the latest criminality being indulged in. Pound 90 pence to cover the course of the environmental agency inquiry. But during routine inspections by OGN in March 2020, with the agency finding the company had negligently exceeded its environmental permits. So, this is exactly what this evilness used us is going to help them perpetrate to exceed the permits. The environment agency investigated a discharge in 2020 that had a short-term impact on wildlife and saw some amphibian species line, but populations recovered by the following summer. The agency said the vegetation also naturally improved after the pollution. And it was satisfied that OGN had taken appropriate action to resolve the situation. But look at this again. Amphibian species decline. That is, the species were murdered. Eustis told Okoba that a meeting held in April 2023 with one of the partners of a private equity firm, that is a shareholder, in Ogan had led to the job offer made. Ogan said neither it nor the private equity firm had any contract with Eustis before the conclusion of the agency's undertaking. Defra told Ecoba the department had no specific dealings with Ogan, but transparency records show other ministers had three roundtable meetings with company in 2000. 16 and 2017. Liberal Democrats have criticized Eustis's appointment. Christine Jardine, the party's cabinet office spokesperson, said it's a kick in the teeth and a former that a former Secretary of State responsible for overseeing environmental degradation is now working for a firm that has been fined for these very acts. This comes as the conservatives continue to tear environmental regulations and leave communities to pick up the pieces of our withering countryside. Rose Jusman, the policy manager at Transparency International United Kingdom, said this latest appointment should serve as a compelling reminder to government that despite Akaba's deploying stringent terms, in this case, the public are likely to find the relationship between public service and private interest too close for common absence of better regulation. To mitigate this, this risk, the government should implement its existing commitments for better regulation of the evolving door and bring forward regulation of the revolving door and bring forward plans for tighter controls on lobbying. DEFRA declined to comment. Is it amazing, isn't it? DEFRA, the combination of evilness, declined to comment. And we shall be investigating further on this 
used is degradation, degeneration, the evilness. Now, what should happen to Yushu? He should be prosecuted, this criminal. And not only is this criminal in need of prosecution, all the members of the judiciary that lied for him and for Christian evilness against baby angel Geronimo should be prosecuted. And and they should be sacked in addition to being prosecuted, and they should be made to pay back all the salaries uh, to all the causes, especially linked with the massacre of, of innocent animals at the behest of this evilness, Eustace. He really has a very ugly face. So what is this Henry Dyer? So he says that in Henry Dyer is an investigations reporter for the Guardian.
So what we are saying is that injustice, Eustace, should be prosecuted. So this is the morning scar going back to the crook, liar, hackney mare, Phil Granville. Completely shameless shitbag. Hackney mare, Philip Granville, Gran Granville has been suspended by Labour Party after the Morning Star published a partying with a former councillor and rising figure of the party's right, who had been arrested for possessing images of child abuse. Glanville faced increasing calls to resign last night after being exposed for public, for lying in public office after having no contact with his flatmate Tom Dewey since learning of his arrest for child sex offences. flatmate so it wasn't a roommate he apologized for an error of judgment after the photo showed him taking a selfie at a eurovision bash with dewey hours after he had been informed by the council's chief executive that is hackney council executive that the arrest had taken place Dewey, 36, was arrested a week before he was elected as ward councillor 
लास्ट में the council informed glanville over the allegations against dewey after a contract with the national crime agency announcing his resignation for personal reasons two days later the nature of the arrest was only revealed in the media reports of dame mag hillier mp's former agent being charged last month after which he pleaded guilty to all five counts of child sex offenses and was given a 12 month suspended sentence and a 10 year sexual harm prevention order Thakne MP Diana Bhatt has said she shared local party members concerns over a cover up by the labor leadership after they were banned from discussing safeguarding concerns around mr dewey this is the point that we discussed in part e about dewey hackney north clp's access to the party's mailing system was suspended after raising the issue last month with labor's london director parlin sanga local labor sources who were kept in the dark about the allegations against dewey for more than a year said yesterday that an independent investigation into who knew what has never been more urgent one of the local labor party members in hackney said there are internal issues for the labor party but more generally there are concerns for the dysfunction of the council our fear is that the labor party machinery will use this as a pretext for putting the constituents of north hackney in both hackney north and hackney south under special measures of some form it's fair to say that the party has recent form for seizing on actual or alleged misconduct of individuals to impose control of constituency parties particularly who are more left wing hackney council's interim chief executive don carter mcdonald said the council is aware that the directly elected mayor of hackney has been suspended from the labor party according to the council institution he remains the elected mayor of hackney the council remains focused on ensuring we continue to provide the best service for our residents fuck off so this program is going to continue with other issues except to say that we are returning we are returning the stupid statement that the interim chief executive of hackney bara council has just made what's her name don carter macdonald the council is aware that the elected mayor of hackney has been suspended from the labor party according to the council's constitution he remains the elected mayor of hackney 
How the fuck? He should be immediately. Let's check what this dawn. Oh my God. There is a post on LinkedIn where somebody is saying that he is congratulating his little sister, Dawn Carter McDonald. Director of Legal and Governance of at London Borough of Hackney Service and a team for securing an award at the 2021 UK Diversity Legal Awards last night. Now, if this is this is what winning diversity legal award means, that Dawn Carter McDonald is now upholding the crook, Philip Granville. And there is a lot of comments after this Isaac Carter's LinkedIn. Other people are commenting. Inspiring, well done to Dawn and team in winning such an outstanding, prestigious award. Now, this woman obviously has no idea about law. No surprise that she's been given a diversity award on legal, etc., etc. Because when Tom Dewey was arrested and he confessed to all the charges, for child sex abuse, he obviously was committing the child sex abuses by knowingly, knowingly neglecting safeguarding children's duties that the council owed to the children. And in endorsing Philip Glanville, Don Cardinal is doing the same. And in Tower Hamlets, in the case of the three girls, Shamima Begum, Khadija Sultana, Amira Abbasi, and before them, few months before them, Sharmina Begum, these four children were all children in 2015 when they were reported for the first time as having left the United Kingdom and entered Syria allegedly to join the so-called Islamic State or whatever. Now, these girls were groomed over several years before they took the flight out of the United Kingdom. So, what what did Tower Hamlet Council do during those years when they were being groomed, these girls, radicalized? What did they do? No one is asked question, and most certainly not Diane Abbott, nor any of the, either of the two councillors, sorry, MPs, both Bangladeshi origin women in both the Tower Hamlet's constituencies. One is Bethnal Green Boy MP, Roshnara Ali, and the other is Apsana Begum, Popla and Limehouse MP. There is no mention of them anywhere expressing any opinion 
as to whether they even knew of the very important duty owed by local councils legally called safeguarding children duties. So what you have in the east of London, next door to Tower Hamlets is of course Hackney. And this man has been suspended, this Philip Glanville, for lying. And a criminal. Now, in the report that has been published by the Ombudsman, Housing Ombudsman, about the next door Bara Council, which too has an elected mayor. Let's check what the Housing Ombudsman has to say. Newham Council is to pay £5,400 after failing to resolve damp and mould issues for over three years. The Ombudsman has found severe maladministration for how Newham Council handled a damp and mould case, taking them over three years to resolve the issue and repeatedly not keeping the resident updated on repairs. So housing Ombudsman's website, what does it say? So the humble, the housing Ombudsman, new home council to pay £1,400 after failing to resolve damp and mold issues for over three years. This item is posted dated 22nd of August 2023. The Ombudsman has found severe maladministration for how Newham Council handled a damp and mold case, taking them over three years to resolve the issue and repeatedly not keeping the resident updated on repairs. We have found severe maladministration for how Newham Council dealt with damp and mold, taking over three years for, to fix the issue, and therefore the ordering the landlord, that is Newham Council, to pay £5,400 in compensation. After the resident first complained, And it's a, it's a long statement by the housing ombudsman.
three years and four months after the first reporting, the landlord advised the resident who had only moved into the temporary accommodation the months before that works were complete. However, when the resident returned to the home, he believed the standard of repairs were unsatisfactory and asked for an independent surveyor report to prove otherwise. On top of the compensation, which has been calculated to include some of the rent paid during the period of severe failure, we ordered for a senior member of the landlord to apologize to the resident, provide him with information about next steps regarding his damaged belongings, for the landlord to review its service against the ombudsman's spotlight report into damp and mold. In its hearing from the case, the landlord said it has acted on all the orders and recommendations and set up. I'll read that again because I have misread one word. In its learning from the case, not hearing, the landlord, that is Newham Council, said it has acted on all the orders and recommendations and set up a damp and mold task force, as well as publishing a draft damp and mold strategy action plan. So here is the case report, which is the case number 2021-11993, Housing Ombudsman Service. And it's dated the 15th of February, 2023. And there is a long statement. which we shall be reading later, not this time. So what is quite clear about New York Council is that if this particular resident whose complaint has been upheld by the housing ombudsman, had not persisted, he would have been neglected. So if you multiply the numbers of cases, similar cases of neglect, damp and mold, by thousands of people that have been affected in Newham, who have been ignored by Newham Council, then and you can see the actual damage being caused by Newham Council, which is operating as a criminal organization. Then you multiply the various aspects of the criminality, add them all together, and you see how Newham Council is not only unfit, it's a criminal organization, sick making.
how many letters does Roxana Fias, the elected mayor, the counterpart, the counterpart in Hackney, in Newham, to Hackney's Philip Glanville? How many letters does Roxana Fias need to be sent to her asking the same questions, which she continues, persists to ignore? Is it two letters, three letters, four letters, a dozen letters, a hundred letters, two hundred letters, hundreds of letters? So there are issues, there are issues to do with MPs lying, ministers lying, prime ministers lying. So where do members of the society, members of the demography, members of the population in the United Kingdom go? seeking redress against these liars. There is no place that people can go to. And the And here is a piece of news that is six hours ago. We have just noticed it. It's a, it's a female called Amba D. Botton who joined Rishi Sunak's team when he took over from Lee's Trust in October 2022. Rishi Sunak's director of communications has quit her role as Downing Street's Mini reshuffle took an internal turn. The former ITV journalist Amber De Botton, who was brought in to salvage the government's sinking reputation when Sunak took over from Lee's trust, 
as Prime Minister announced on Friday, she had decided it is the right time to move on. She provided no explanation for the move, but paid tribute to Sunak for his support and leadership. In a nod to the pressures of the job, De Botton said number 10 was a demanding and high pressure place to work, but added the professionalism and talent of those working inside it was exceptional. De Botton lasted less than a year in the role, having joined Sunak's team at the end of October 2022. Previously, she had been a senior editor at ITV, where she helped craft its coverage of the Partygate saga. The channel broke several stories about the illegal events in Downing Street during Boris Johnson's premiership. It published leaked footage from a fake television press conference where staff joked about a Christmas party not being socially distanced. Government sources suggested the timing of De Botton's departure was not entirely coincidental. It comes days after a long-serving former government social ad special advisor, Jamie Njoku Goodwin, was reported to have been lined up as the new number 10 director of strategy. One insider said the move had put some noses out of joint, with De Botton appearing to have been undermined. She's not really in the gang, said another. Onjaku Goodwin was said to have been brought back into Downing Street by Liam Booth Smith, who as well as being his friend and former flatmate, is also Sunak's chief of staff. So you see, it's a complete, absolute corruption all over the place. Corruption, corruption, corruption. The previous Downing Street director of communications Adam Jones had lasted considerably shorter in the role than De Botton. He took the top job in September 2022, but was cast out along with the rest of the Truss administration when she, that is Truss, stood down just after 49 days in office. Under Truss, the role was split, with Jones helming political communications and a senior civil servant appointed Simon McGee to oversee other government communications. If you look at how long people have lasted in the role recently, it suggests it's a nigh on impossible job, noted one well-placed Westminster observer. Earlier this week, De Booth Smith is said to have urged some special advisors at their weekly meeting known as the SPAD school by suggesting they quit if they had doubts about winning the next election. One of those present characterized his message as step back if you don't think we can win. One senior official said that one senior official said the number 10 political team were blinkered and seem to think the whole country is on Rishi's side. Some Tories have poured praise on the government's attempts to control the narrative this summer with a series of themed weeks packed to various announcements. However, Small Boats Week fell into disarray when migrants housed in the BB Stockholm were removed over safety fears just days later. A former cabinet Minister said policies announced over the summer recess had been incredibly weak. De Botton was part of the media team that gave presentations to Whitehall departments earlier this year. The Guardian revealed that the slides said, We still have a challenge with cut through and raised concern about most people being unclear what the government's priorities were. So what did the Guardian reveal? It's game over. The Tory gloom spreads as Sunak fights for his five pledges. This article is more than one month old. Front benchers fear they have become zombie government, with polls indicating PM's priorities remain unclear to the public. This is Aubrey Allegretti and Pippa Creera. 
progress on meeting Rishi Sunak's five pledges has privately come under fire from conservative MPs this week, six months on from his urge to be judged on delivering what he called the people's priorities. Jitters have extended all the way into Downing Street with Prime Minister's senior aides traipsing across Whitehall to raise concerns about how the pledges are landing with the public. Slides from a presentation given by number 10 media advisors to press officers working in government departments seen by the Guardian admit, we are still, we still have a problem with cut through. Citing internal polling, the presentation said 67% of the people were unclear what the UK government's priorities were, despite number 10's efforts to hammer them home across speeches and set-piece announcements. A data tracker was said to have found that a lower proportion of the public had reported hearing government talk about all key narrative themes compared with the previous month. Continuing to be blighted by what once senior Tory MP called the landmines of Boris Johnson's administration, the government has found itself blown off course in a sign that Downing Street is wary of its winning 2019 voter coalition falling apart. At the next election, press officers across the government were instructed at the meetings this week to focus on key audiences reach. An audience segmentation included in and those disengaged with the government, with key health audiences identified as frequent GP visitors, elective surgery patients, and those with a chronic disease, the presentation suggested. And it goes on. It's recently polling showed the gap between the parties widening in the past few weeks, undoing a lot of conservative polling gains since early in the year, noted Professor Will Jennings, an elections expert at the University of Southampton. Most government insiders think a reshuffle about which there has been much speculation is likely to be held back until after the three by-election results that will be delivered in the early hours of Friday, 21st of July. But some MPs dispatched to the Summerton and Frome is said to have been treated as a write-off given that the investigation into its recently departed MP David Warburton has lasted 12 months. The Lib Dems have had a whole year to prepare and it tricks basically every box for them. It ticks basically every box for them, said one government insider, even though the Tories currently have 19,000 majority there. Selby and Ainsley is proving tough as well. Apathy is killing us, said a conservative MP, sent up to canvas there recently. Another who has visited the constituency, which Boris Johnson ally Nigel Adams won with a 20,000 majority at the last election, added, the lever vote is stronger than expected. Now, The expand London's clean air zone by the Labour mayor of London, Sadiq Khan. However, the much slimmer Tory majority in Johnson's old seat of about 7,000 puts it at greater risk of flipping. Despite the sense of dread creeping into the growing quarters of the Conservative Party, some remain optimistic. They believe Sunak will hit his 
target of halving inflation by the end of the year and are counting on labor to make its own missteps. We just need to polling, need the polling gap to close by 1% each month. Then we'll have the gift left turning on Starma. And it will be them losing their heads, predicted one government insider. So these are speculation by the Guardian. These are not facts. A Guardian is indulging in stupid speculation, telling them about how to destroy society if he gets the chance. Now, there is a confession from a former resident of Brick Lane area. Let's check what she is doing.
So we shall be, of course, looking at all these items in the later editions, the later editions, and we shall update according to the particular issues and the evidence as we find them. Going back to the question of the Baby Angel Geronimo essay, by the High Court judge called Grits. Of his ruling, so called, and we shall make a short list of the lies that he perpetrated, and we shall conclude based on the lies that he perpetrated that. That Griffiths is a criminal who should be prosecuted. 